So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyben. And now for the review of the day. All right, I got an iTunes review. Absolutely must listen to podcast. Five stars from Luca Miho. Luca, you rock. Thank you so much. Great podcast. Love to listen in the morning to get pumped up for the day. Content is not only great, but actually very, very, very helpful. Keep up the good work. Hey, Luca, I will. I promise. Keep the comments coming, guys. I love them. And remember, I eat feedback for breakfast. So give me a one star review if you want or a five star review if you want. I don't care. And the more reviews we get, the better guests we get. So please subscribe first and then leave us a review or wherever you're listening. All right, Rockstar Nation, I got a great guest today, Mr. Scott Hemmelstein, and uh, like Beerstein, I'll have you, uh, not Beerstein, Beerstein, Scott Hemmelstein, you know, is killing it out in California, Porter Ranch, California, where he is a household name, and uh, we're going to talk about how to make yourself a household name in the real estate sales game. So uh, without further ado, Scott, uh, welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. It's a pleasure to be here. Hey, Scott, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself so they get to know you better? Sure. Before I got into real estate, I was traveling around with all the different uh, television networks. I'm you know, basically uh, working for Fox, CBS, ESPN, um, you know, doing production on their side, broadcast Long Beach State basketball on radio for nine years. So it was a lot of fun, but the, the business was changing in the early 2000s, and decided to make a change into real estate. I'm on a request from my mom that I should get my real estate license. That's hilarious. And were you a cameraman or were you a, a, a broadcaster, no, I, newscaster, I was, what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, w I was doing, uh, for all the major networks I was doing, you know, I was work traveling around as a statistician. I was working as a stage manager, as an associate director. And then, like I said, you know, I was doing, you know, some stuff on radio for Long Beach State and Cal State Northridge. So I was broadcasting their sporting events on radio. So all right, a lot cool. of fun. So what year did you get into real estate? I uh, got at the very end of 2004. Okay. So, you know, 14 years now you've been in the business. And, and let's get some nitty gritty. So, like, uh, how many houses did you sell, would you say, in the last 12 months? Uh, in the last 12 months, uh, well, if you look at last, last year's numbers, we sold, we sold 41. Okay. And of those 41, just out of curiosity, how many came from like your farm? Uh, almost a majority of them. I think it was that 32 of them came last year from the, from the farm. From the farm, which is phenomenal, right? So he's pulling. And, and, and let me own other houses or they may have kids or other family members that need to sell. So, you know, that includes, you know, those referrals as well. Okay, that makes sense. But still, you're pulling three three deals, uh, you know, a month out of the farm. What like what percentage of your business would you say is buyers versus sellers, Scott? I'd say for us, it's probably more seventy percent are sellers and about thirty percent buyers. Wow, that's great. I love that number. I love that number. Okay, and um, so what was your ECI, Scott? Then we call it on the show ECI, Ego Commission Income also known as gross commission income. What would you say it was over the last 12 months? Uh, over the last 12 months, it's about uh, 520 or so. All right, beautiful. And what's your profit margin? Project, project uh, profit margin was about 350. 350. Okay, so it's a buck 75. So wow, that's pretty, 78% or something like that. So it's pretty good. Now, do you have your own company or another brokerage? What do you, how, how are you set up? So uh, we, have our we have our license at a brokerage. Um, I have an assistant and I have one buyer's agent. So, uh, so that's, how it's, that's how we're kind of set up. And then uh, we had a full-time assistant uh, last year and then she ended up moving. 
And then we brought in like basically a TC and she works from home. So we basically pay her, you know, per file, but she's incredible. Um, and it's made just a huge difference for us. Yeah, that's great. Well, you must have a hell of a deal with your broker. Yes. <laughs> it's at 20, if you're only putting out 22% and that includes brokerage fees, that's, um, that's a good deal. Um, so, okay, so let's, let's talk a little bit about, you know, the where and the how, which is what everybody wants to hear. Tell me, first of all, did you start this farm from day one? Yeah, so, so at the first company I was with, uh, the owner would, n this is back when the market was very strong at the, you know, the end of 2004, 2005. And the, the company that I decided to go with was a boutique agency. Because when I interviewed with all the different brokers, all the different brokers said, oh yeah, Scott, you're going to make a lot of money. You're going to do great. But I interviewed with this one broker and he said, Scott, if you're willing to be teachable and accountable, you'll be very successful. And that resonated with me. Well, so I listened to him, everything that he did and told me to do. And so basically, like, uh, he told me that I couldn't work with buyers. So that meant that I could only do lead generation activities for sellers. So he told me I needed to door knock. So I did. So I didn't have any business at the time. And, you know, just coming from television that a lot of my friends and whatnot were not in position to buy. So I had to go out and generate my own business. So when I first started, I literally door knocked 57 days in a row. Like literally 57 days in a row is what I did. And then um, by month four, I picked up a, I actually picked up one buyer um, that actually was a million dollar transaction. That was my first deal. And then after that, like about a month later, I ended up getting three listings in the farm. Uh, this is great. Uh, a couple of things. I, uh, okay, Scott, if you're willing to be teachable and accountable, the rest will take care of itself. I mean, if, if every real estate agent just heard that and actually um, became obsessed with it on their first day on the job, <laughs> you know, everybody would be so successful. Um, so 57 days in a row, that right there is incredible. And then, you know, what happened is obviously, you know, you didn't get immediate results, but within, within a few months, you got three listings out of the farm. So right. I want to talk to you about that door knocking, right? So like what times do you door knock? What do you say when you door knock? Uh, tell me the stories of how those people, if there's any, came to call you. You know, let's talk about that. Right. So usually, typically, like, you know, this time of year, because the sun's out, you know, so much later uh, here in Southern California. So typically, I like to go out um, between, you know, four and seven or, you know, five to seven thirty if it's over 100 degrees, you know, if you're going to go out. You know, you, most people are, are home in the evening. So your contact ratio is going to be a lot, uh, a lot higher. So usually, I like to go out during those times. Another good day to go out is Sunday evening. And by and large, I'd say, Generally, your contact ratio is somewhere between 30 to 35%. On Sunday evenings? Yes. So Sunday evenings are the hot spot, right? I mean, like, it, like really, you know. I it, find Sunday. What's that, Friday nights too? Well, fr you know, Fridays are great too. Like, I'll, I'll go Monday through Friday. I usually don't door knock on Saturday. Saturday's not a bad day. So when you get there, right, so you're going out. Monday through Friday, but you're smart enough to know evenings people are going to be home, right? Um, and you're smart enough to know uh, people are most likely to be home Sunday evenings. Right. And you knock on the door, and what do you say? Day one, you know, obviously what I was saying was a, was a little different than what I say now. Okay. So, when I, so, so when I first started walking around, um, obviously nobody in the neighborhood knew who I was. I mean, me out of a police lineup if their lives depended on it. Now, obviously, that you know that, that is quite different. So when I went around the first time, I would just introduce myself and just say, "Hi, you know, my name's Scott Himmelstein. You know, I'm your you know, local neighborhood specialist. Just want to stop by, say hello, and just see if you have any real estate questions." And you know, most of the time, they would say no. Sometimes they'd want to talk about the market. Um, and then I said, well, hey, you know, it was great talking to you. Uh, you know, look forward to seeing you again next month. So now I've planted the seed that the expectation is that I'm already going to be there next month. Now, I didn't give them any scripts and I didn't, you know, try to ask them, well, are you going to be buying or selling? Because if I do that the first time, 
when I come around, think about it yourself as a consumer, that if I come around the second, third, or fourth time, and every time you're going to stop answering the door, number one. And number two, <laughs> it, it, num number two it's going to be impossible for, for me to build that relationship with you that happens over time. So again, if I'm, coming, if I'm coming to the door the second time around, it'll be something like this. Hey, just want to let you know that the house down the street just came on the market. It's the same floor plan as yours. It's 2174 square feet. They listed it for $699. They haven't put the sign out yet. The, uh, I had a chance to preview. Upstairs is remodeled, including the kitchen. I'll keep you posted what happens with it next time I come around. Great to see you again. And that's it. That's it. So you're basically kind of running, uh, you're like the Pied Piper, Paul Revere. You're kind of running from house to house, just saying, right. hey, you know, this house just sold, this house is on the market. And that's your whole intent is just to be that guy that's coming around telling everybody market news. That's it. And then, and so basically like marketing community news, you know, so that way when they, when they uh, see you, they understand that you're the expert when it comes to real estate. And so any of their questions are top of mind. So any of their questions get answered, basically. Right? Correct. So like if they're, Correct. if they're thinking about it, you're ready with the, with the answer. It's not like I got to get back to you, right? right? And so, okay, so now, like, are you, what else are you doing besides door knocking specifically? In the farm? Yeah, in the farm. Right. So, uh, so we drop, uh, we drop just listed, uh, just closed. Um, we don't do any of these recipes or, you know, the <laughs> you know, you know, funny stuff. And, and the other thing too, like, this is very important. Like, you, you know, you have to remember that in 2018, we're, we live in a society where everybody's competing for everybody's attention. And so you have to like, as myself, I'm guilty at So And so if you try to be fancy, right. And you decide that you're going to try to put all this verbiage on whatever piece you're going to send out, it'll never get read. You're better off putting one photo, one or two things, and a call to action, and, that, and that'll draw them in. Because you're asking way too much for somebody to sit there and read a paragraph of information of a blurb when they can actually probably read that online anyways. Hey guys, as you know, my book, Six Steps to Seven Figures, has been a New York Times bestseller and a USA Today bestseller with over 30,000 copies sold to real estate agents and real estate investors alike. And uh, listen, I have decided to do something really special here. I am going to give away 200 copies. Yes, I'm going to give away 200 copies that I have. And all you need to do to get one is to go to free six steps book.com that's free six steps book.com all spelled out s-i-x steps book.com and you can fill out a form and all you need to do is pay the shipping and handling and i'm going to send you that book absolutely free or simply text the word pat to 444-999 my goal is for you to have this book if you haven't read it yet an absolute must for any real estate agent's library. Six Steps to Seven Figures, a real estate professional's guide to building wealth and creating your destiny. Just go to free six steps book.com and fill out the form and I will send it to you absolutely free. Or simply text the word PAT to 444 999. That's P A T to 444 999. All right. So how often, right, are you mailing them this postcard or is it a postcard with a photo of the house that says just listed, just sold, a photo of your face and a call to action? Like how, how often, if I lived in your farm, how often would I get something like this? Okay. So, so I, I think what I'd like to do is also backtrack because where I am now isn't where I was in the beginning. And so I don't want to overwhelm people. No, you know, absolutely. Like, wow, this like, is, like, it, I love that. You, you yeah, know, take take so, your time. Take so, us from day one to, to today. So the first six months, I did not I did not mail at all. I think it wasn't until about month ten that I started mailing about once a month. 
Um, and at the time, I was only, I was door knocking maybe about a thousand homes, um, like the first year. And then I, I just did once a month. Uh, over time, you know, obviously you want to be revenue based. So, you know, as your revenue continues to grow, at, at some point, you know, so the mailer that we send out usually has about 10 to 12 houses on it that just either says sold, closed, and just has the, the picture of the house and one or two small details in microscopic print. But people, all they care about is what they see is just closed, just sold, just listed. The, the drop that we have uh, for, the, uh, for our, our houses that either just closed or, or just listed or open house invites, uh, those usually just have one or two houses. Uh, you know, for us, I think uh, we get charged 18 cents a piece to drop. Um, so we drop it through uh, about 2,300 to 2,500 homes. And, um, and then, so the, uh, right now we're currently mailing once a month and then we drop, you know, two times, uh, you know, probably two times a month as well. Wow. So there's tons. So like how, how many would you say, like how many, like, and, and these are all postcards, right? Yeah, these are all, they're, they're all postcards. So a lot of them, like just to, you know, to keep costs down, we'll do, um, we'll do like a good size, like quarter size, you know, uh, postcard. Um, and then sometimes we'll do a half size and then sometimes we'll do 11 by, you know, uh, we'll do eight and a half by 11. So it's just, you know, it just depends on, you know, what type of piece we want to, we want to give out. And, and how many people on your farm would you say now? Uh, right now we have 2,300. Our buyer's agent just literally started last, uh, last month, uh, started door knocking. And so we started going in, we're, we're adding another uh, 600 homes as well. So she's going to start doing those. And your buyer agents, that's kind of a cliche, right? Like, like you're not, she's really, he or she is really a listing agent as well, right? I mean, because they're, they're right, door knocking. Right, right, right. Right, because, she, because she's door knocking. And literally, like, the, the second day that she went out, she got a listing rate. So, what? I mean, okay, so tell that. me about that. Tell me that story. <laughs> uh, so, she calls me up at, like, 8 o'clock at night. She says, Scott, I was out door knocking for two and a half hours. I did about 65 homes. Um, she wanted to discuss that we have a listing lead and um, that they want to they want to downsize. I started talking with them and just asking some questions, and so I, I was able to get their email address and their phone number, and so they want to meet with us next week. So we're going to meet with them next week. So did she call you from their house? Yeah, she she texted me, and then, and then we talked later 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 that evening. Okay, so, I thought she I thought she like put you on speaker. I mean, no, 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 no. You know, in real yeah, life, she could. she could FaceTime you and write, oh, yeah, yeah Scott's no. right here, you know? Yeah, no, in, in today's technology world, that's definitely feasible on, on you know. On you know really, I, I, I kind of like that idea. What if you had, what if you had an iPad, right, and you connected it to your hotspot and you walked mm -hmm. around and you just sent all these little people like her, I don't mean to say little, but all these people like her, five of her. And as soon as they got something hot, they FaceTimed you or they Zoomed you and be like, here's Scott, right? You've probably seen him before. Hey, how you doing? Nice to meet you. You know what I mean? I mean, what would be wrong with that, really, if you think about it? No, I think, yeah, you know, again, you know, it, I think, you know, in today's 2018, people care about, you know, everything being done super fast and using the, utilizing the latest uh, technology. So I think, yeah, I think that would be a great strategy if people can do it. That's awesome. And so let me go over the script with you because I think we skipped over that a little bit or cut out. But uh, so like her script that she uses when she is shaking someone's hands when they're answering the door is what? Uh, so, you know, again, so it goes back to what I said before because she's trying to break into that community and in neighborhoods. So, you know, at this point, we're just try you're just trying to build a relationship. So, you know, what we're going to say is something to the effect of is, you know, oh, hi, you know, my name's Scott, you know, just want to introduce myself. I'm the neighborhood specialist. You know, if you have any real estate questions, you know, let me know and look forward to seeing you again next month because you want to, you want to be able to set the expectation that they're going to see you again next month. And again, being able to deliver at that point, you can give them more information. Let's take it on. Now, some of them may just want to talk to you about the market right now. And that's great. And then, and then another thing that's really important, um, because, you know, this is, we're, this is like the only industry I know of in real estate that people just, you know, can't handle any type of rejection. 
And uh, I mean, like, if you think about it, like if you went to Best Buy, if you, if you really thought about it, and if you're looking at TV and the salesperson comes over and asks you and says, Hey, you know, um, can I help you with anything? And you said, no, no, I'm just looking. I mean, the salesperson for Best Buy is not going to go back into the break room and start crying. But in real estate, we get one rejection and it's like, you know, the apocalypse, the apocalypse is like right upon us. Okay. So and let me so, stop you, stop you there. Cause I want to ask you, why is that? I, I just think that, you know, I think it's us more than anything else. I think it's just our mindset. So uh, is it that, know, that real estate attracts sissies? <laughs> well, I think people don't understand necessarily what they're actually signing up for, number one. And number two, what their actual job is, is to lead generate, which is going to encompass being rejected. But what I was originally going to get to is that I can't tell you how many times when I first started that I would ring the doorbell and people would say, no, not interested, just leave it there. And what I tell people is that even if they don't open the door, that the fact that someone says not interested, just leave it there, that is a victory for you. Because you have to remember at that point in time, you're disturbing their life. They may be getting ready to have dinner. They may be giving the kid a bath. They may have something else going on in their personal lives. But again, the fact that they eventually, if you keep doing it consistent time over time, they will remember you. And I had a house, I think it was my third or fourth year in the business, and I knocked on the door. Every single time, the wife was incredibly surly to me. And she said, just leave it, just leave it there. And she was almost borderline upset with me and Ruth. And one day, I got a call and I was driving, and I wrote down the address and I looked it up, and I was like, wow, this has got to be a mistake. There's no way that I'm going to have a listing appointment at this house. And sure enough, we got the listing, we sold it. And the day that we closed escrow, and, and I'm still very good friends with, with them, and they moved out to Texas, and I always joke with them every time I talk with them about it. So every time I talk with them, I always joke with them about that the fact that the wife would never open the door. And, you know, and she said, she's like, Scott, if I put it myself, like my husband was working long hours. I have two young kids. Like, you don't know who's out there. So I would never open the door, but she says, we always got your stuff. And we always knew when it came time to sell, we were going to call you. So again, you know, you have to take away some of your own preconceptions and just be consistent and do the job that you're supposed to do every day. Yeah, I love that story. I mean, that's great, right? Because you just don't know. And, you know, and I love, again, the analogy on the Best Buy, right? It doesn't make any logical sense, right? That you would be like, just because you're an hourly wage, that you'd be like, it's not me, it's Best Buy. It's almost like if you have a $12 an hour job at Best Buy and someone rejects you, you think it, they're not rejecting me, they're rejecting Best Buy. But right. instead of us saying, oh, they're not rejecting me, they're rejecting our broker or they're rejecting the real estate industry as a whole or whatever you want to say that's bigger than you, we tend to say, they're rejecting me. And I guess it's just, it is what it is, but it's a, a fascinating thing to think about. So, all right. So do you guys do any community events or anything like that in the farm? Yeah, we do a lot of them. And so again, you know, you're talking about making sure that you're building relationships with it. And yes, the biggest of a part of it is to be able to knock on doors and be consistent and be able to get your contact. But the neighborhood also wants to make sure that it's not just about you, that you're helping out and you have a vested interest in the community. So we do a few different events throughout the year. We do a community garage sale in the spring. Where we organize um, all the different homes and each home has a garage sale at their individual house. And we typically have about 55 to 60 garage sales going at one time. We advertise in the local paper. We have over 200 directional signs. It's a really big event. Uh, we just started another event in the spring called Pet the Doggy Photo Day. There's a local park in our farm, and we bring in a professional photographer. We have costumes, and uh, basically uh, for free, the families can come in and get professional photos with the dogs and the family, or you can just dress up the dog. So that was a really uh, <laughs> pop pop popular uh, It's sort of like a, a yappy hour in the park. Everyone brings it their is. dog. And you have like little things that the, you could put on the dog to, to make them uh -huh. look cute. And Correct. And, and, and for the kids to wear costumes as well. And a tip on that 
if you go to PetSmart or Petco, um, like right after Halloween or talk to them about a week before Halloween, uh, most of these major brand pet stores, they throw away their Halloween costumes after the holiday. So there's a way to get some free costumes for you. Um, so it's, it's a really fun uh, activity. Um, we bring in our lender. We have a huge uh, canopy set up. Uh, we have um, different uh, um, doggy parks that are listed around in the area. We have Dunkin' Donuts and coffee that are brought in, you know, by our lender. Obviously, have water bowls, uh, you know, for the dogs to make sure they can drink water. But we have a whole bunch of different things going on at the same time. It's, it's a fun event. That's amazing. What a, what a great idea. I love it. Well, cool. Well, then, thanks so then, much. I, I, yeah, I was going to say, and then the, the, the other big one is we just literally did it last weekend where we, uh, we have an ice cream truck and we give away 55 cases of ice cream over the course of six hours. 55 cases of ice mm -hmm. cream over the course of six hours. So you put the ice cream truck in the park and you just say free ice cream? No, we drive around the entire geographical farm. And uh, one of our past clients, um, we downloaded the, the song, The Entertainer, from iTunes. And then we went into his home studio, cost me about 100 bucks, And um, I uh, um, basically put my, you know, what I wanted to say on it. it would be like, free ice cream, come and get your free ice cream, courtesy of the Scott Himmelstein Group and Park Regency Real Estate. And that would just be on a loop. And so that would be blasted into the neighborhood for six hours. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it. And I'm glad you can fit, fit it all in there. I, I did the same thing once in my farm and, um, and I couldn't get everybody in. I, I made the farm too big and I couldn't get everybody in and people were so pissed that their kids didn't get the free ice cream. Cause, you know, we thought we'd just be able to whiz by, I guess, and throw out the ice cream, but everyone wanted to hang around the truck and it ended up taking like 14 hours. So, uh, Oh my gosh, that's too funny. <laughs> All right. Give us some advice on like tools that you use and have used to build up this farm that you, you've created over the last 12 years or so. Right. Okay. So obviously you need a database, whether any type of lead generation you're doing, you have a, you need a database. I started with, that was with, with something very simple. They're not even in business anymore, instant impact. Um, and then I kind of, right now we currently use top producer. Um, they're okay for what we do. I think if you were doing cold calling or something else or another form of lead generation, it might not be the best CRM out there for, for somebody. But we're pretty happy with Top Producer. It's compatible with a lot of some of the other tools that we use. Um, so before I talk about some of the other tools, you know, again, you're, you're talking about building relationships and how do you go about doing that in a farm? Because you know, it's great that you walk through there and you're getting the contacts that you want to do. And again, you know, you, you, your goal is to get at least 20 contacts a day. So when you're out there, so that's usually the goal is to get at least 20 contacts. But you know, once you get those contacts, you know, and you get their contact information, like now you've got to start following up with them, especially if they have email. And so um, over time, we use two different platforms. We use viral marketing. Um, which we found to be a really good one where we basically send two informational videos of things that's taken place in real estate as well. It goes to our past clients, our sphere, um, every, pretty much everybody in our database and our social media. And, you know, it might be a market update. It might be, um, you know, talking about, you know, how things, uh, you know, have changed in real estate or, you know, something like a, a new rule with the city. Uh, and we, we, constantly bring in different vendors to be on there, whether it be our lender, appraiser, um, our home inspector, to talk about different things to kind of give tools um, to our, you know, both our buyers and sellers and people that live in the database, uh, you know, as well as, you know, the community. And, you know, again, because you're not soliciting for business, um, you do, again, it just helps solidify the relationship as you're the person to call as far as real estate goes. Now, viral marketing is not very cheap. But I do highly, highly, highly recommend BombBomb. I can't tell you how powerful of a tool BombBomb is. It is so simple. I shoot probably three to five videos every single day on my car, you know, on the way to, into the office. And I use that for everything for follow-up, whether it be if I had a listing appointment the night before or um, I just got off the phone with them and, you know, I'm going to have a listing appointment whether it be a birthday for a past client. I mean, think about that for, I think it's something like 20 bucks a month, right? And for all your past clients or everybody in your database and you have their birthday information, 
everybody else in 2018, all they do is write on their Facebook, happy birthday. Most, I, you know, I hardly even get a phone call anymore except for my parents, you know, on my birthday. But imagine if you actually take the time, and it only takes about 15, 20 seconds to shoot a quick video on your cell phone in selfie mode, upload it into the bomb bomb app, and then distribute it out to the person, you're going to set yourself apart from everybody else. As a member of the Rockstar Nation, you may have noticed that every guest that comes on the show now is required to bring with them a free tool, an item of utility that real estate agents can use to drastically increase their sales and profits. Some of the things that have been brought have been ebooks, forms, reports, negotiating techniques, hiring guides, postcards, checklists, open house secrets, newsletters that are sent out, sphere of influence forms, referral request forms, and the list goes on and on. If you would like to get this free toolbox full of items of utility, simply go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox. That's hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply text toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999. Okay, so, so what does the bomb bomb app do? Uh, like, because you could do right. You could, I could, I could upload you a video right now and text it to you. So tell me about, tell me, tell me, like a third grader right. and understand what how bomb bomb helps you. Well, you can text it, but what I find is that uh, I find that the email because we have a whole template that has like happy birthday on it. So we find that the email actually gets more traction a lot of times than the actual text message um, because what's starting to happen now. Um, you know, most people don't really answer their phones just because there's so many spam phone calls and you're starting to see we're entering that realm into, into text as well. And so what I, we, what we found over the last few years is that people tend to still really open up their email, um, you know, quite often. And so, um, you know, I, we found that just being able to email them a video, um, you know, it goes a long ways. I mean, you could do it with a text. Um, but we found that it, it just looks a little more professional because on BombBomb, Bomb, you can have your own template that has everything customized. So it just looks a little more professional than just a normal text video. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And they just, they just help you set it up and they put little print on it or tell me like, what do they yeah, do? So, uh, so on mine, so mine, like, like up on the top in our template, it has like a recent sales listings, reviews, they can click on those links. And then it has a, a header on there, which kind of has our logo uh, as well as some information about the San Fernando Valley. So, you know, it's just, like I say, it just has a more professional look to it than just sending out a normal text. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just sending out two or three a week to, to two or three a, no, day, no, a day, random people in the farm or what have you. And they mm -hmm. just thinking of you, by the way, 417 Umpty Ump Street just went under contract. It's similar to yours. Just thought I'd give you a heads up. Anything. Right. And then, or, you know, sometimes it might just be like, it might be somebody, you know, it might be somebody's birthday. So it would just be like on, uh, on Sunday, uh, you know, it was somebody in our farm's birthday and they're actually a past client as well. So, you know, I just, Sunday morning, I was in my car and I just said, Hey, Mary Bell, it's Scott. How are you? Hey, just want to wish you a happy birthday. Hope you're able to enjoy the day with your family. You know, uh, again, hope you're able to enjoy the day. Look forward to seeing you guys soon in the neighborhood. Have a great Sunday. Take care. Quick, simple, you know, cogent and succinct, like I always say. That's incredible. And I want to go back a little bit about the call to action. Pretty much your call to action is, is free market analysis, right? Call me to five, right, five houses worth. That's it. Right. And then, and then, so, you know, these days, you know, it's like we have a, we have a URL that's like your 91326.com. So, you know, you do have to have some type of call to action on there because that way gives them an instant, you know, market of market evaluation. But when they do, they obviously have given us the, you know, our contact information. So once we have that, you know, we'll follow up and see if it's actually, if they just want to get an idea of what the market's doing. And if that's the case, we'll just tell them kind of, I'll talk with them on the phone and give them an idea. And if it's something more serious, then we'll, you know, we'll, we'll schedule an appointment with them. So basically they just go there, they type in their name and number, and then you call them. Correct. If the, you don't Correct. have it linked to um, one of these services that kind of yeah, gives well, it. It, it, it is, it is linked to cloud CMA. Cloud CMA. Okay. 
All right. And uh, so that's a good thing to think about, guys, if you don't have that cloud CMA. Okay, cool. So, all right. What, what I, I, and I love this because, you know, I mean, here's the thing about Scott's business model that I love the most is number one, 70% of his business's listings. All his business in the beginning was free, right? Like 57 days of door knocking. It's hard work, but it was free, right? And he got three mm-hmm. listings. So his first three listings he ever got in life were free, meaning he didn't have to pay for them. And uh, now he's bringing on other people that are getting business for free that he's not having to pay Zillow and, and all these people to get leads for his agent or any agents in the future because, you know, they're getting them for free just like the way he got them for free. Now, now it's reached a point, of course, where he's paying money to, to bombard them with postcards and, and things like that. But if you look at his profit margin, again, it's one of the best in the business. So I like this model and so many, so many, so many ways. What about, uh, what's a failure that you've had, Scott, in building this or in building your business at all that you could share uh, with and learn yeah. from? You, you know what? Uh, God, you know, you know, it's such an up and down business. You know, it's hard because, you know, sometimes you're on real highs and then sometimes there's some real lows. I, you know, I say the biggest one is for whatever reason, in 2013, I think it was, 2013, um, I just had this horrible first six months of the year. I mean, everything that took place was just an epic failure. Um, I mean, we had deals fall out of escrow, um, and then we had one where the uh, we, we finally got one of our buyers into escrow in a house in our geographical farm, and then they had to cancel because the wife got the you know transfer to Arkansas. And so the first six months of the year, I literally only had two closings, literally two. And you think like, oh, wow, you know, the panic buttons here, like, what can you do differently? But every day I went out there and it was so hard to put a smile on your face when you knew you were struggling. And then July came and then all of a sudden we had 14 in escrow in like two weeks. And, uh, <laughs> and so it's one of those things where I tell people, like, don't give up. You know, just keep doing it. Like, be consistent. It's not easy. I mean, if it was so easy, everybody else would be doing it. But at the end of the day, like, this is, you know, for geographical farming, think about it. That the post, of the, the mailman is out there every single day. You know, rain, snow, heat. Same with the UPS guy. Same with the Amazon guy. Same with the FedEx guy. Even the ice cream truck guy during the summer. All these guys. And there's no other business that gets compensated like we do. And I can tell you that if you do it right, that you will end up being much more successful than all those other professions that I just mentioned to you. No, I love that. And I, and I know in my own business, multiple times I, I have memories for whatever good or bad, right? They're almost post-traumatic stress type memories. Of, I have a memory of sitting in the driveway of my house, not wanting to go inside because I was yeah. like, because a deal had just fallen through you know, on my way home and I was so distraught by it. And, uh, I was just, you know, thinking about how I can become a lawyer because I didn't want to do this anymore. Like this business was for the birds. And of course I didn't after a good night's sleep, you know, but we all have those moments and you, your moment lasted six months. Right. And and there was, there was, there was, there was another time I'll never forget. It was on a Thursday where I had five deals fall apart. And for a variety of different reasons, <laughs> I mean, you, you really thought the end of the world was right there. And I remember I just, I told myself, well, you know what? I'm going to take th- th- this weekend off. And I think I did, a, I think I door knocked a thousand homes in a week because I was so upset of what happened the previous week. So, you know, use it as motivation. Um, ideally, like you wouldn't want to have those situations come up, but unfortunately the business that we're in, they are, there's always going to be a challenge. And it's basically, you know, how you react to the challenge. It's funny how we remember those. I, I remember a deal, uh, you know, it was a mistake that I made. I won't get into details, but it was a, st- a mistake that I made in growing. And um, I made a mistake. I admitted the mistake to the seller. And she fired me. And not only that, uh, she had given me two referrals and um, of people that I had their house listed and she told them to fire me and about the mistake and they both fired me. And so 
just like you, I had three, lost three deals in one day and um, all because of my 100% my fault. And I just got to beat myself up over that. And uh, that was tough, you know, but again, it happened, right? You know, just think of, uh, and I've had t- tons of millions of dollars in commissions made since then. And, um, but, but it's great to hear, right? You know, you just got to keep persevering. You can't quit. Right. 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 But, but you know what? The biggest advantage to farming and why, you know, I always recommend to doing it to agents is, is twofold. Because if you think about it, that if you have a listing in your farm, with, let's just call it city A, for example, right? The probability of you being able to find another buyer for another home in that same geographical area is going to increase tenfold as opposed to, let's say you have another listing in city B, which is 15 miles away. You know, if I'm looking in, in city A, most likely I'm probably not looking in city B. And so it's going to be really hard to tie those listings together. But if I have multiple listings in city A, now it becomes a situation where if, I, if we're at an open house, it's like, oh, great. You're looking for a house that's bigger. You need more than 2,000 square feet. Um, great. We have one coming on the market in two weeks. Now, all of a sudden, your value proposition shoots through the roof. You've differentiated yourself from every other agent out there, pretty much, because most agents are like, oh, yeah, I'll send you some listings from the multiple listing service. And at the end of the day, you're no different than Redfin or any other internet uh, discount sites as well. And so now you've given real value to buyers that come through your open house. No, absolutely. I love it. I love it, Scott. Well, this, this has been phenomenal. What, um, Scott, as you know, everybody that comes on the show brings a free gift w- with them, uh, something of utility that the rock star nation can use in daily uh, in their business. But what free gift are you bringing today? Um, so we gave a, I give you guys uh, something that I think is really valuable because people ask me all the time, Scott, how do I choose a geographical farm? And there's some numbers that you should kind of look at when you're actually choosing a geographical area. And we gave you some real solid tips to, to keep in mind when you're actually choosing the geographical area that you want to use. Oh, that'd be awesome. That'd be awesome, guys. And I'm gonna, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that on hybendigital.com. Uh, I'm going to just do Scott H because I know you guys are going to mix up the I and the E and the E and the I and his name. <laughs> I, I would do that myself. So, uh, hybendigital.com backslash Scott H. That's hybendigital.com backslash Scott H. And I'm also going to put it in the agent success toolbox, which can be found on hybendigital.com backslash toolbox. That's hybendigital.com backslash toolbox. Or guys, just text the word toolbox to 444-999. That's toolbox to 444-999 and you'll get a link to the free toolbox. You'll get a link to Scott's gift and you'll get a link to all the other items that everybody else brought on the show as they've come along over the years. And if you want to reach out to Scott, say hi. Thanks for being candid with us. Thanks for sharing. All his information and social media links will be on the show notes on hybendigital.com. Back to Scott. Hey, Scott, you've been a blast, buddy. I hope that uh, if I'm ever in your neck of the woods, we can uh, get together face-to-face and break some bread someday. Sounds like a plan to me. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. 
It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.